Yo, what's up? It's your girl, Leslie from the B, repping the Les B Real Podcast. And I want to give a shout out to everybody that's been tuning in, liking, commenting. If you want more episodes and want to keep up with me, make sure you guys subscribe down below at The Wrecking Spot. Shout out to The Wrecking Spot, man. Y'all my peoples. Y'all my good peoples. And today, I got a very special guest. Southeast LA's very own <laughs> enemy. Hey, First off, it's Southside. So oh my the, bad, South LA, but my bad. shout out to Southeast though. I thought you were from the Southeast. Nah, nah, I'm from Cudahy. It's always been a double S. That, but okay, always I've since always my father was all that. Yeah, I don't know why. It, I mean, you know? I guess, I guess on the map it is Southeast. I guess, but. Cut A has always been synonymous so, with the double S and running with the South Side and all that. Less. So that's the area, you know, say Compton, Watts, Linwood, mm. South Central. That was still that. be considered South Central. Yes. Okay, because I'm an East Side well, baby. It's, it's considered South LA for sure. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Because it, it, we're we're South of East LA, which is exactly. So that's why I like yeah the mis not misconception, but that's where I get it misconstrued. I think maybe because uh, probably like Downey and Paramount or exactly. Southeast, right? And we're and like right close. there in the middle. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's how that goes. Because okay. matter of fact, Jazz, me and Jazz were talking about that too. Oh, so. for sure, for sure. Yeah. But now, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. So let's just get right into it. Like, let's, let's talk about your upbringing. Like, how was it growing up in Carajay? How oh, was it man. growing up out there? You know, it was wild and shit. I, I, <laughs> I came up in the 80s and I, I was a oh, teenager shit. in the 90s. Okay. So, you know, just off the rip, that era was crazy. You know, there wasn't no phones and shit. But Cut A specifically has always been. You know, if you're from L.A., you don't know the history there. It's mm -hmm. always been about drugs, gangs, all that shit. Yeah. Not to glorify that, but that's just right. what it was, what I came up in. For you know a minute, but I feel like now it's it's so calm. Why do you think that is? Uh, well, it depends. on why well, I think it's more calmer now than it was then, but I mean, they're still killing people there almost weekly. So. Facts. That's <laughs> how I feel about Boyle Heights, too. Like, it's yeah. not as active as how, as how it was in the 90s, but it's but, still active. Yeah, they're still doing you know, shit you to know. people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and your family, like, um, you have brothers, sisters. Yeah, like I have one oldest. brother. Okay. Um, You know, moms, my pops passed away, but RIP. Pretty, pretty much my whole family comes from where I come from. Mm -hmm. You know, from from the neighborhood all the way down. So okay, for sure. I, I come I come from a family that's well versed in that neighborhood. There's probably like we're already on our second, you know, third generation of people coming from that Damn. specific neighborhood. So, mm -hmm. you know, my mom's in, and my pops were like part of the first beginning creation of the neighborhood mm -hmm. of where we're from. So, okay, for sure. Yeah. And. What part of Mexico is your family from? Are you guys from Mexico? Um, what's your background? My first generation family is from Chihuahua. Chihuahua. My pop's side. And then my mom is actually a Native American woman. And she comes from a reservation in San Diego County called um, Palma. So Palma. Yeah. Do you know how to speak like any I, I know. I know certain or? words from the dialect. I'm not fluent in it. That's in, dope. in Spanish, I, I, I probably speak more Spanish than I do Native for mm. sure. Okay, okay. And you would never really hang out with your native side? No, nah, no. Nah. I've, I've always been raised to know that I was native. Of course. But, you know, I grew up in a barrio my whole life because mm -hmm. my mom was uh, sent here on a work program for natives in the early 70s. Oh, wow. And when her grandmother died, there was no one there to care for her no mm -hmm. more. So the government took these native people and they sent them into Los Angeles and mm -hmm. San Francisco and different, like, hubs where... Mm -hmm. If you grew up in East LA or like Cudahy, all in that area, if if you lived there long enough, you'll notice there was Native American people there. Mm. Like for instance, in the neighborhood I come from, we're the only Native American family, but people know us because of that. That's crazy. And there's uh, you know, there was an Indian center back then in uh, Bell Gardens, mm -hmm. that's currently now in Commerce. So, a lot of Native American people migrated in that specific area, Damn. Compton all the way down, because there was a, even an Indian center. In Compton on Long Beach Boulevard at one point. So, I didn't yeah. know that. And I love that you're talking about it and that you know that part of your history because yeah. it's part of your identity. Well, yeah. You know? you know, I've always been very transparent on who I am. You know, I think mm -hmm. in the music game, a lot of people want to, you know, if, if if you're in the Mexican genre, so to speak, you want to be 100% Mexican. Mm -hmm. And then down the line, somebody exposes them like, you're a hey, rapper, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Point being is like, I've always wanted to be transparent on who I am, what I'm here to do and how I represent the, the no, hand. And, thing, and I feel like that makes you super unique as well. Oh, yeah, know? for sure. Because you have you know. all these different Any, 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 any means is, is a joint, believe yeah, that. Any means <laughs> is a joint. Speaking about any means, you're a rapper, right? So yes, I am. What, when you were growing up, like... What was playing around your house? What music were you listening to? Um, what were you gravitating towards? Man, I'm going to be honest with you. It was early, bro. So it was like, you know, at, at a time, rap music was not how it is. Right. It was like, it was like, you know, hard rock. 
it was it wasn't even grunge yet. It was like straight, mm-hmm. you know, Guns and Roses, Metallica, or Gregory Abbott, or some shit like right, that. You right. know, it wasn't until like the early '80s when I started to like get into like elementary, not elementary, but like junior high and mm-hmm. all that. That's when hip hop became famous. Like it started to be really known, but. Yeah. I was really listening to like shit early, like Grandmaster Spade, like um, you know, Battle Ram and then like NWA. All that mm-hmm. shit was like shit you couldn't even get in the record stores. You had to get them in like swap meets and shit. Swap meets. You know what I'm saying? And then mm-hmm. like I think the first real cassette I seen was like Born the Mac or some shit. No way. And that shit was already like old. It'd been out since like the early eighties or something. So, yeah. you know, I was listening to like the pioneer shit, you know, like Easy E, NWA, yeah. um, Ice Cube. That's what I was listening to. But as I got older, what I what I what I gravitated towards was more like East Coast hip hop though. You feel mm. what I'm saying? Yeah, because in your bars and your in the music, um, I hear that that East Coast sound. Like you're yeah. you're a West Coast, you know, artist, but yeah. I do hear that East Coast in the background. That's dope. And like what made you wanna start making music? When did you start rapping and all that? Um, my cousin Green Eyes, the one that's here with me now. Um, oh, okay, shout out Green Eyes. Yeah, he he um he attended MI, and he graduated from there, and and he took like music business. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, I was incarcerated at the time. I know this is, at this point, it sounds like a cliche story because it feels like every <laughs> rapper this is their story. I went to prison. I learned how to rap, but yeah, I really I really like we would always be like. You know, he's like my brother, so to speak. So I spent a lot of time with him in, in my life, even current mm-hmm. days. So we would always talk about, like, making a rap group and shit. It was like a real fantasy for, you know, younger kids at the time. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, he ended up at that school. He ended up gaining a lot of knowledge. And, and he was like, yo, you should come home and rap and shit. And um, when I when I start rapping, I start rapping in the New West era. So that's about... Describe that. like. So the New West era would be, like, Glasses Malone, J-Rock... Yeah. And that's why I had a lot of, you know, throughout my, my career, I was able to collaborate with them. You know, I met Kendrick Lamar early. Dope. You know, when I met Kendrick, well, I'll, I'll get into that, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> So he hit me up. He was like, yo, I I, I, work, I I go to a studio and the studio is ran by Meech Wells. And I didn't know who Meech Wells was at the time, but, you know, if if you do your homework, he's someone who, who created Platinum Records for like Snoop Dogg. His mother's oh, is Mary wow. Wells. So when I got there to record at his studio, I met Badass, rest in peace. Okay. And Badass was the first dude to be like, like, yo, you, like, how long you been rapping? And I was like, I mean, I've been rapping, but I've never rapped on a mic. Like, tonight is the first time I ever rapped on a mic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, I, you know, I'd been rapping for like three years uh, previous to that because I was writing and I was practicing. So... I, I learned how to rap really well a cappella, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. So when I would rap a cappella because I had so much practice at it, mm-hmm. people thought I was a seasoned rapper because I knew my timing. I knew how I was right. going to do it. Your I knew cadence, my voice. Your delivery. Exactly. So I would get out here and just start spitting and fools would be like, dog, this this dude can rap. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Where you, where you been at? <laughs> and not only that, like I was Mexican and there was not Mexican people rapping like that, that yet. I you want know to what point that out. Like, you're a brown artist during that time. Yeah. And I feel like during that time, like there wasn't really a lot and, of representation and, 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 you know, of us in hip hop. Believe it or not, because of the way I rapped at that time, it became a a a, a, a hindrance for me. Mm, why? Because why you um, you know, people like to dress it up, you know. But the reality of it is this, you know, in LA, blacks and Mexicans don't get along, and 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 it, and it, and it's very it's very sectional if and when they do, right? Mm-hmm. So. You know, right. in the early heydays of Chicano rap, uh, let's just be raw, it was hella racist. Yeah. So, you know, the 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 dude, it's funny because I see the dudes now that were back then trying to, like, trying to, you know, how do, how do I say, block us and, and, and putting us down are the same dudes that are on the nuts of these new dudes mm. that they hold character. Um, and why do you say that? Like, whole character that comparison. contradicts what they were standing for back then, you know? Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, I I won't say the things that they would call us because obviously it's derogatory and will offend people. Right, right. But they would be like, those are those rappers that rap like such and such. Mm. And what were you saying, like the N word? Nah, in music, never. I've, okay, I've never. Okay. I've never used the N word ever in my life. Okay. But you got to understand, I come from a certain area where exactly. it's been, you know, there is a black influence there mm-hmm. because we grew up side, side by side with yeah. them. But I've never used the word nigga in anything I, I rap because I speak for my culture, not right. myself. And, mm-hmm. 
me using the word nigga would be selfish of me because that's my preference, not not the Hante's preference. Mm-hmm. So obviously, if I'm a spokesperson for the Hante, I have to represent as such. So I never saw fit to use that word. Not only that, like they don't like it. Like you got to understand, like I came up in a, I came up around black crew. I was, I, I came up in black crews. Like I was from Dollar Figure. Mm-hmm. Then I transitioned. Then I was from Blue Division, and there was nothing but black rappers around me continuously. That makes sense. And nobody appreciated somebody that wasn't black using the word nigga in a cipher or anywhere around there. It was like there was still that that line that wouldn't that wasn't supposed to be crossed back then. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And there was a respect there. So you know, things things are, are are a little bit. I don't know if they're out of control or it's just evolution, but at the same time, not ev- not all not all evolution is good. You know what I'm saying? No, I know what you're saying. And like yeah. that time was just super, super different. And so yeah. what do you think made you stand out during that time? Well, I was a everybody? cholo rapping like a black dude. <laughs> and I and, and, and there wasn't nobody that could dispute that. Mm, I, I was it. rapping that good. You know what I'm saying? And and yeah. I'm and I don't say that to be cocky. Because the people tell me that, you know, you could look at the comments, you could look at what people say about me. Yeah. So I'm not being cocky about that. That's just what I've been told. No, I hear you. <laughs> and and it, it goes to show because of the yeah. artists that you mentioned earlier that you hung out with, like yeah. you mentioned Glasses Malone. Like, how did yeah. that relationship start? How did he notice you? Like, um, talk to me about that. Okay, just to kind of like take you through it, right? Yeah. Okay, so. Let's be real, I mean. Yeah, let's get to the bottom <laughs> of it. So I came in, like I said, I came in and, and we met Badass, so. Yeah. Badass gave me a feature. The first okay. time he heard me, he said, "Dog, like, let's do a record." So we did a record. I and I, you know, I was elated, dog. Like, that's badass. You feel mm-hmm. me? And, and he became my friend after that's a while. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, from there we just we just went on our way. We didn't know what we was doing. We didn't know how we was doing it. We just started going to every open mic that we could find. Shout that's out to dope. Rick Hard. You know, if you if you a, a a real underground hip hop person out here in Los Angeles, you know who Rick Hard is. What um, was his role? Uh, he's a he's a he's a promoter okay. that throws underground shows, and everybody who somebody has went through Rick Hard. If you really somebody out yeah, here, we're trying to be a rapper from yeah, LA. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Okay. Everybody, I could I could name you stars now that have done Rick Hard shows. That's so, dope. you know, shout out to Rick for that. But you know, we started off with him, and uh, you know, back then it was like it was about mixtapes and people getting yes, DJs. Yes, the mixtape mix era. Yeah. Yes. So, um. You know, we we had made these songs and we were just passing out these CDs. Right. So um, eventually I ran into a DJ. His name was DJ Ill Will. No and, um, way. You know, at that time he was just getting out of college. Mm. And he was like, he was fucking with Gorilla Black in them, but I didn't know that at the time. Okay. And he was like, yo, like, um, well, I reached out to him. I was like, yo, I, I need you to host my mixtape. I sent him some songs. I was rapping over like G-Unit Beats at the time. And he was like, yo, this shit is like dope. Like, what's up? You know, like, I want to host a tape or whatever. Make it happen. And and I was like, all right, cool. He was like, look, this is the only thing. I need like $100 so I could get the studio to use the boards to mix it. I didn't know. I didn't know about the mixtape game yet. So I didn't know that there was actually shit you had to do on Pro Tools with the tags and shit like that. I didn't know that yet. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, cool. Boom. I shot him the money. A couple days later, he brought me the tape back. It had the drops. It It was hosted by him and DJ Rockstar. And um, it was called Birth of a Beast. Birth of a Beast. Boom. And, How many uh, songs did it have? I want to say it had like 12 freestyles. Any fe- oh, freestyles. They were no. just like freestyles over like G-Unit beats, shit okay. like that. No features? Um, Yeah, Badass was on there. Rocker from Dilated Peoples was on there. Okay. That's and, the, and the reason, the way I had met Rocka, <laughs> shout out to Rocka, is I was at a show. Mm-hmm. I was at a Gorilla Black show, actually. And I didn't know Gorilla Black yet. But, um... There was like a VIP room. I don't know if you were around back then in Long Beach, it was called the Ice House. Okay. And it was a two story club. Ooh. So on top of the on top of the VIP was where they would put all the rappers. Makes sense. Um, so it was like Gorilla Black was in the house that night. Um there was somebody else, but I remember Rocker from Dilated People being there. And, you know, I've always been like a a, a lyrical, you know, I listen to lyrical rap, mm-hmm. hip hop, all that. So I knew who he was off yeah. the rip. And so, how did you approach him? I, I well, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> so we tried to get we tried to get in through the fucking uh through the security, but they wouldn't let us in. So what happened was me and the homie, I I I really honestly don't remember who I was. I want to say I was with Green Eyes for sure, but I okay. Matter of fact, I was with my man Marvy Marv. <laughs> Shout out to Marvy Marv. He's from New York, right? Okay. He was part of he was he was running with us early. He's not a rapper though, but he's he's a good friend. 
So I was with Marvin Marv and fucking um, I climbed on top of the of the of the stairwell. No, you didn't. And climbed up and threw myself over on the VIP. And when I fell off, I fell right in front of Rocker from Dilated. Fuck. I swear to God on my life. In front of everybody in, in the club, the like whole, everyone's training the up whole and VIP. shit. And, wow. And, and motherfuckers are like, what the fuck? That's crazy. You know, because I'm like this essay dude and That's shit. That's what you know, I'm I had saying. The big, like long, this big tall, white tee back then with the yeah, hat on yeah. and shit. Bang and motherfuckers out. are like, okay, these fools must be here to rob somebody Damn, or something. Damn, yeah, right? yeah. But right away, like, <laughs> uh, Rocker, like, he embraced the motherfucker. He's like, yo, what up, man? You know, you all right or whatever. Yeah. So, bam, Just we're talking. <laughs> and um, right away, he embraced me, man. We just started talking and shit. And, you know, I think from him talking to me just kind of alleviated the the pressure of the moment. And yeah, everybody yeah. just kind of went back to what they were doing. Okay, for Maybe sure. Maybe they figured I belong there. Yeah. So... Before you know it, man, he shot me as, you know, he was like, I was like, yeah, I'll be rapping and shit. He was like, oh, that's dope. And he was like, man, give me a call and shit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll, you will hook up or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. So I gave him my number. And I took his number. And um, I was running around with a dude named Cecilia Million at the time. He's not a rapper no more, but he had yeah. a, um, a, you know, to be honest, we were selling dope. Okay. And we had a you spot. To make the money to we pay had, for we, all this <laughs> shit, dog. We had a spot on One Sixteenth in Avalon that we okay. were selling dope out of, but we had a, a little a little bootleg studio there. It was like an old ass Mac computer in a fucking and like closet, a fucking mic with a, <laughs> with a thing tied around it, etc. Oh et shit, yeah. So um, I was like, yo, I'm gonna call Rocker and see if he'll do this shit. And sure enough, he showed up on it. So no way. When we put the tape out, it had badass. It had Rocker on it. That's what's up. And you got to think, Rocker rapped with Kanye West. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Tupac, I mean, Badass rapped with Tupac. Tupac, yeah. So motherfuckers were like, they're, okay, they're who rocking is this with dude? your music. Like, who yeah. is this dude? You feel me? Mm -hmm. And we're just passing the shit out everywhere we go. So fast forward, um, we put out the tape mm -hmm. and it did good. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then Ill Will was like, look, bro, um, I'll be DJing for Gorilla Black and shit. And Gorilla Black, he's been wanting to put together a Mexican group. Ooh. And he got a rapper over there. He got a rapper over there named Dorilla. But, you know, Dorilla, he's not really, you know, he's not trying to focus on putting a, a group together. Mm -hmm. I think I think maybe you'll be a good uh, uh, a good addition over there. Right. So I said, all right, cool. And um, it was still very early. I might have been out by like eight months already. So I'd seen a bunch of shit. I remember sitting down with like Mallow Man Ace and him trying to like scam me out of like $1,300 talking about. For a song or? No, nah, no. Nah, he wanted me to like pay him to get on some compilation. Oh. And, and, and it was like, they, he was like reached out on MySpace and was like, yeah, we're giving you a record deal. And then when, <laughs> when we showed up, they're like, well, we need $1,300 and uh. You know, it was just like a scam because yeah. I remember other artists later on saying that he was collecting money from them and scamming them. That's and, and and he 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 like met me at um at like on Sunset I think and he and he was drunk I remember with like a white girl and he was trying to sell me dreams like yeah I control the whiskey club and I can have you be a star and, yeah, yeah you know yeah. just all Host this whack shit. weird shit right yeah yeah. Whatever, you know what I mean? Like, come on now. I, I, I was raised around crack dealers and prostitutes. I just yeah, looked at him like gonna, he was stupid. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, how you going to play me, dog? Yeah, yeah, so, you know, fast forward, and we ran into this situation. Mm -hmm. So I was a little, like, iffy, like, okay, well, he says he's finna do this, but I don't know. All these broken promises, like. Yeah, it ain't mm -hmm. nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, like I said, I, I came in from the street. You right. dig? Um, you know, I started selling crack since I was 12 years old, so. Mm -hmm. I knew about scams and hustles and prostitutes and pimps and, you know, drug dealers and all that. You dig? So the music industry, in reality, reminded me of the crack game, but yeah. really wasn't like it. But it was in a way. You mm -hmm. dig what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. And the aspect of, like, the thirstiness, the hungriness, how people are trying to get over on you. And, the grimy shit. You know, because, yeah. you know, I think I think what a lot of people don't understand, and they have the misconception of the music industry, is they see the cameras, they see the lights, they see the chains. But they don't see the rapper go home and give the chain back and he lives with his mama or he lives out of his car. Right. I can name you numerous people that people think are legends that I met him sleeping in a, in a in a studio fucking recording room. Real shit. You know what I mean? So Real shit. a lot of it is smoking mirrors. There's only a very few people that are really, really touching money doing this shit. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So I um, I was just aware. 
You know, I started becoming aware of that as I was going, though. Because, you know, I'd meet a rapper that I'd listened to my whole life and the dude was sleeping on somebody's couch. That's crazy. How old were you? Sorry, I'm going to just go back yeah. a little bit. Like, How old were you when all of this was happening? Like, you I fucking was already, jumped in the club making these mixtapes? I was like 25 years old, okay. I think I was. But yeah. You're still hung- you, that's when you were like hungry to really yeah, focus I was, on this music. Yeah, I, and- at that point, I was starving. Okay. That's why, I, in my in reality, I think I... I got into these circles very fast because I was ready to go, bro. Yeah. I was, I was battling niggas like it, it just. Yeah. I I I I had seen um I had my perception of what hip hop was in like through magazines and right. and and smack videos and all, and and really thought really really took my my visual of what the East Coast hip hop scene was and thought it was like that on the west coast so i was ready to battle motherfuckers mm-hmm. i was ready to do all this <laughs> but then when i got in this game i, I understood that it was more gang driven it was the more politics. it was more la shit you yeah. feel me it wasn't necessarily really hip-hop like that mm-hmm. so you know we started to navigate our way through it you know what i'm saying yeah. um and then it will hit me up and he was like yo uh hot dollar having a video shoot i want you to pull up what? and um I want to say that was at the um the the name of that song was called uh, I love the streets. I love the streets. And that's when I met I met Glasses Malone right there for the first time. Mm, okay. And um, we we just talked briefly. Boom, boom, boom. That night he like um will have me spit for Black, you know, cause Black Black had a barber shop back then. It was on Rosecrans and Prairie. Okay. Before he went to the Feds or whatever, and um. You know that was that that whole that shop was a movie right there, man. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> you know every everybody that was hot at the time was coming through there. You know, That's lit. I man, I could tell. I I know rappers that, that that have got extorted for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know what I mean? At the um, barber shop. Just I feel like every hood has a barber shop where shit like, cracks. <laughs> you know, it was just it. Like I said, if you was around in that area and you was in that circle, you know exactly you what know, I'm talking yeah. about. It was popping. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. I start I start rapping for for Black and he was like, like yeah you know you part of DF. Oh shit! And um, so that's when the group came about. Well, or... what happened was is he sat me down and he was like, and th- and this is, and this is going on as uh, through a period of time. It's not mm. so so the night I, the night he heard me rap, I was initiated. Okay. Now I'm starting to come around a little bit more, get my feet wet. People right. beginning to know who I was. Networking. They're knowing that I'm that I'm any means now and that that I'm. Gorilla Black's new rapper. Got it. Um, and then you know, eventually we had a convo, and Gorilla Black was like, "Look, I want to make a uh, a Mexican group. It's called Dollar Figure Essay." And he goes, "I want you to be the president of it, and Ooh. I want you to go find rappers to be a part of it." Period. So I said, "Cool, all right, that's what's up." So then that's what we start doing. So the you first start dude, scouting fools, yeah. Basically, um, okay. Where, what areas in LA did you go, or how'd you go about that? The the first place, I don't, I don't. You know what? I can't even, uh, exactly remember how I met Beretta, mm. but I met Beretta. I, I met Beretta early. I don't even remember how I met him, but he showed up to the trap house in one one sixteenth and Avalon. <laughs> now, you know, Beretta was a rapper that that was starting to get a little bit of traction back then. And, um, you know, he had a record on the radio, I believe, or something mm. like that. And he was dealing with, like, Steve Lobel. Mm. And he had a... Um, matter of fact, he was managed by Steve Lobel when Nipsey Hussle was managed there. Mm-hmm. So anyways, boom. So I put the group together. So we meet we meet Beretta, boom. We put him on. Hot Dollar, no, Gorilla Back met another group that was called The Block. So they was brothers. And it was uh, Too Much and... Uh, tech okay. so they was a part of it then i met another dude named fox west he was from east la we made him a part of it um and then it was the dude sicilian he was riding with me but that was the crew and Dope. then um you know right before we started beretta came and he was like dog i'm finna change my name because i'm having issues with the management company that i'm with yeah and i'm gonna change my <laughs> name to concrete so i said Concrete? And he was like, yeah, you know, because I'm hard and shit. This. <laughs> so I said, all right, cool. Shout out to Concrete, man. That's my bro. You know, I've That's been knowing dope. Concrete for a lot of years. You know what I'm saying? So, boom, we make the group. And like I said, we went viral the first day. We put the record. Because you got to think, like, all these Mexicans that we put together was 
Mexicans that was rapping like advanced. Yeah, there yeah. wasn't no orale homie, all that. Mm -hmm. Not that there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just not how we was rapping. We was being influenced by hip hop. Yeah. Real hip hop. You dig mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. everybody was had a had a very good ability to rap. So when they put the when they put the video out, it, it, they put it out on a website called World Star Hip Hop. But World Star Hip Hop wasn't World Star Hip Hop yet. It was just a website that they had created. They didn't have videos there. It just okay. said World Star Hip Hop. That's crazy. And there was no nothing there. What year is this? This What'd is in 07. 07, okay. So they put the they put the the video out. And I always remember that day because our video was competing with 211 from CTE's video at the time and we beat him. Damn. You know what I'm saying? That's... And by the end of the night, we were at like 120,000 views. Fuck. But you know, there was no such thing as going viral then. YouTube was a new was a new um was a new platform a new platform Everyone was still learning world how star to use hip hop it. Yeah. was not even world star hip hop yet it was mm -hmm. just a a website that was taking good hip hop and was building a fan base Crazy. so you know we didn't know how to you know when I think about it now we could have walked in the interscope and got a fucking record deal yeah but we didn't know what we was doing yeah because there know? was the internet beginning of time for the internet and yeah. shit YouTube and shit so you know we had Gorilla Black in the video mm -hmm. we had Hot Dollar in the video. So that's what made it even bigger. It was it was a thing, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's um, crazy. So maybe about a week later, there was a big show. It was Trina. Trina, I love Trina. <laughs> it, it was Trina. It was Rick Ross. It was Gorilla Black. I think Glasses performed. Nice. And I want to say, I think Young Jeezy. Okay. It was at the Music Box in Hollywood. So boom, I'm there. You know, and now now people are starting to notice us because. They seen us on World Star Hip Hop. Yeah. And, 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 and they some, see you guys with these other artists yeah. too. So some dude runs by me, some little dude, and he and he's like, yo, J-Rock, that's a that's a Mexican I was telling you about. He was on World Star Hip Hop. And I looked and he's like, he's like, hey, what up, homie? My name's K Dot. So I said, what? hey, what's up, man? It's good to know you. He's like, yo, bro, like on, on everything, I never met a Mexican that raps better than you, bro. And I said, thank you. you Who know told what you saying? that J-Rock or K Dot? Uh, K Dot. Shout so, out K Dot, um, man. If you know, you know. You know, fast forward. Damn. That's that was that was the that was the reaction everywhere we went. You know, those are the Mexicans that were on World Star Hip Hop. Blah, Rapping blah, blah. for sure. So right away, my cousin's like, "Bro, you need to put out one of your mixtapes. Like, this is your time right mm -hmm. now. You need to start. You know." So I say, "Cool." So I start making Birth of a Beast too. Of now a Beast. I got J Rock on it. Now I got That's Glasses so Malone on it. Um, I had a record with Gorilla Black and Hot Dollar. Damn. Um. I had Lala on there. She's a Mexican singer that was around being managed by Mac-10 at the time. Okay. It, it was a tape. It was a legitimate tape. Boom, I put it out. And, um, you know, it just kept feeding, you know, feeding that that persona of what any means is. He's a dope right. Mexican rapper. And um, we were just passing it out everywhere. And then Cali Untouchables co-signed me. You know, they Cali were a big DJ group at the time. Okay. And, um, but, you know, we wasn't... We wasn't, we, we was getting, people was knowing us, but we couldn't sell the tapes because the Mexican, the, the other Chicano rappers were buying the big giant cases. We didn't really know shit about nothing, you know, because the, the mixtape game was about selling them in the small jewel casings yeah. and we were giving them away for free. But the, the Chicano rappers, they were already up on retail. So they knew how to like, you know, buy the real CDs and they knew how to like how to burn it they everything. knew how to rig rig the barcodes so you know oh, a bunch shit. of different shit that was going on so when we I'd show up to give my tapes in the swap meets mm -hmm. the Chicano rap uh, stores would be like we don't want that and I'd be like well why not and they'll be like because it sounds like a black rapper and I'd be like that's not a black rapper that's me that's and they'd be like well yours got to go right there next to the game's new mixtape what <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't the only one going through this. Omar Cruz was going through it too, and he had a record deal out of Interscope at the time. Mm. So you know there was no car shows. There were you know, and and you know even I, like on Khalifa rap, you know we'd be bombarded with like that's that such and such rap. Yeah. It was just a lot of people weren't fucking. It wasn't with us. the stereotypical Chicano exactly rap it, shit. It, it, it was straight outcasted type mm -hmm. shit. So you know. Like, how did you overlook all of that? Like, all the negative, like... Because I'm pretty sure bigger artists that are in the Chicano rap scene were I, hating and shit. So I only, I only... How did you respond to that? Bless. I only experienced it on the internet because, in reality, I was running around with dudes that had... I, Gorilla Black had a platinum record. Mm -hmm. 
and, and his brother had a record that was top five on the radio. So I was only experiencing the 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 blowback from the Mexican rap scene on the internet. And when I was with them, I was around nothing but black rappers and black in, 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 in predominantly black events. So I was right. at Powerhouse or okay. I was at fucking the the source shoot when they had Blue Division and Top Dog and all yeah. the people were there. I was in all these different circles. Yeah. It, it, it almost started to get where people thought I was Gorilla Black and Hot Dollars bodyguard. <laughs> Type and they shit. thought I was like a goon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, And the whole Dollar Figure essay, they thought we were like, that was like the rumor in the industry, like Gorilla Black got a bunch of Mexican goons mm. that are running around. And but we was really rappers. Yeah. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? That's crazy. So, you know, I, I, I started to... um. You know, I I I think I think when you when, when you when you enter the industry on that level, because there was there yeah we were putting out tapes, but we were doing a lot more celebrating than anything, right? Yeah. Because you know, like I said, Black and them had deals. We were at all the parties. We were getting drunk. We were going to clubs every people single were night. People seeing, seeing you guys more in the industry than people in the industry were seeing the people like the exactly. Chicanos at that time. You exactly. Know what I'm so you know, we were going to the clubs. There was there it, it got to a point where. Like Club Ivar, they knew I was Gor- I, that I was with Gorilla Black, so right away they would be like, "That's Gorilla Black's artist, let him in." So I'm walking in the club in front of 300 people. It was yeah. just a different vibe. It was it was it was more it was more party than anything, and and in my opinion, it hurt my career. Why? Because that was the standard that I believed that I needed to be treated in, and what I needed to be a part of at all times, because I had an experience. The groundwork of really nobody fucking with you. Every, mm-hmm. Like, yeah, these fools were not taking our tapes, but we still were in these situations where who gives a fuck? I got I got a record by J-Rock. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I'm in this building. I'm in that building. Exactly. I'm kicking it with this person. But that doesn't mean that that demo accepts you. And if that demo doesn't accept you, then there's no money there. Mm-hmm. And essentially, we weren't being fed to that demo because they weren't taking our tapes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, Damn, that's crazy. And eventually that that whole situation started to die down. You know, Black lost his deal. And then, you know, a lot of inner turmoil started happening. Really, really what it was was turmoil started from the beginning with the dollar essay click. That's because, what I was going to ask because I feel like a lot of times groups, yeah. like, they break up. So why did you guys break up? Um, Really because... I feel like a lot of the the members in that clique at the time felt like I was being show favoritism. Mm-hmm. But in reality, I was just the one that was going to go everywhere on call. So, like, I could have been up in the studio with Hot Dollar all night long, and then Gorilla Black calls me at 6.30 in the morning and says, hey, we're going to Arizona. Be ready. And I was ready. So I was that one. You know, I didn't have a job. I was selling, like, nickel rocks and fucking okay. bags <laughs> and bags of weed. You dig? Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. Have a, I, I didn't have a job. I didn't have yeah. kids. Well, you still make your money. And, and I was just focused on trying to be a rapper. That's so dope. every and anything they were telling me to do, I was ready to go. So, you know, the other dudes in the groups, they had jobs. They had families. They had mm-hmm. kids. And they couldn't. They, they weren't mobile as I was. Yeah. So, But somehow I think that that translated into them thinking there was favoritism there so eventually we all began to fall out and then the whole group fell apart and then that whole situation just fell apart and when all of that happened you're like fuck like we're not talking no more like i'm gonna do my own thing right like that's, uh, uh, that's when you I, I rent the solo def- route or you've always been no like no a solo um, artist i mean i was a part of the essay group but i was always putting out solo material okay but when i left the dollar figure essays yeah i was definitely motivated i was like I still have a lot of relationships here. I still have a lot of people at clubs that fuck with me. Right. There's a lot of people that will fuck with me. Um, and then, you know, that's that's when <laughs> that's when the reality sets in. Well, like, if you're not with these people no more, then that's their relationships, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, there was a couple of people that turned their back on me. They wasn't fucking with me no more. But, you know, that, that shit just wasn't wasn't hindering me i was mm-hmm. just so focused i believed in what i was finna do yeah. so i started making more mixtapes um and then it was in like 2011 you know i'd always had kept a a, a consistent line of communication with glasses he yeah. was he was in one of my first videos i remember mm-hmm. and um we would always be chopping it up so finally one day i got a call or i called him or i don't remember exactly but we you know we would chop it up and mm-hmm. then you know, he was like, yeah, you know, I'm finna leave cash money and shit. And uh, I got a new studio in Signal Hills, and I'm trying to rebuild, man. Why don't you come fuck with me and shit? Wow. 
Boy. So I was like, okay, cool, you know. And it was just an invitation to go hang out. So I went there. And, um, you know, it was it was a vibe, definitely. Because, you know, Glasses had his name. So I'm I'm yeah. still seeing the biggest rappers in the game come through. True. Jamie Foxx was in that motherfucker one time. Oh, shit. That's <laughs> you feel <it>. me? So, <laughs> um, you know, I, I didn't want to overstep my boundaries. You know, I just went yeah. there to visit. And then I was extended a, a, another invitation. So I showed up. And eventually, I just start showing up like that. You know, they, they hey, come back. Or, hey, you want to roll with me here? So, you know, I, I, I think if I had to really explain that, I think I started really, like, doing gopher work there, you know. Because if they wanted me to go get some, I'd go get it. Or I see. if they needed me to run some, I'd go do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Were you considered, would you consider yourself, like, his artist? Like I, was, I, was, yeah. I was a part of Blue Division. I was okay. Glasses Malone's that's, artist. Okay, for and, sure. And that's how... I, the second half of any means career begins, you know? Talk to me about the second career. Because I feel like there is, like, a certain point in your career where, like, things kind of went left instead of right. Yeah. And what did you do, like, during that pivot? I, I just kept making the music. I just kept making the mixtapes. I, um, I had found a store in Inglewood that would give me 600 burnt disc mm -hmm. and 600 jewel casings for 120. And I had already went and bought my own burnt tower. Mm -hmm. So I was just getting the CDs. I was literally just fishing them out. Yeah. Because I had them I had them on me all the time in a box. That's and smart. I'd just give this shit away. And uh, you know, even till now, my big one of my biggest records is Summertime in My City. And that's a record that I have with Glasses Malone and Omar Cruz. It was mm -hmm. another it was my second biggest viral record. But once again, we don't know we don't know what viral is yet. Right. So the shit's already, just going and then yeah. not going. And the fucked up thing about that is that 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 video was well over to getting a million views. And what happened? I didn't know the importance of YouTube, so the dude that filmed it was like, yo, let me put this on my page. Got uh -huh. all these millions of views, uh, hundreds of thousands of views, and then I guess when he didn't want to do it no more, deleted the fucking record, right? What? So, That's fucked so up. So it, it's just all these, like, bro, I've had so much, like, like opportunities ups and, and ups and downs, yeah. right? So, Damn. um. You know, eventually, eventually, I just fell in line and I became part of Blue Division. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And um, I started recording there. And, you know, that's that's when I started to learn how to really make music. You know, I, I learned about writing. I did a lot of ghost writing uh, for certain artists that would come in for glasses. He needed me yeah. to do it. I would write verses. Um, there's a big record that I can't talk about that I wrote <laughs> that okay. came out. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, and there's a couple of Mexican rappers records that I wrote that I can't say, but mm -hmm. you know who y'all is. You feel me? <laughs> but Better give the homie his credit. Yeah. No, there, there's there's like two or three records that have over a million views that I actually wrote, but I can't tell you. And they're Mexican rappers. Okay. But I can't say it because they paid me and there's non-disclosures. So. Why do you think... Since we're on like a Mexican tip right now, why do you think Mexicans hate on Mexicans so much? Like especially in the rap game, I feel like. Why I just think, think it's in is? our blood. We're competitive. You feel me? We come from Aztecs, warriors. That's true. Everything about us is competitive. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and it's macho. It's all that. So it's just like that. You feel yeah, me? I feel um, like I, In all honesty, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I can operate not being like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to be competitive. I have to be motivated. I have to have a goal in mind you feel me otherwise feel what, what are we doing it for what are we reaching for you yep. know what i'm saying now you're right but one thing i also wanted to ask is like obviously you're from a neighborhood so yeah. like how was that challenge or how did you were how were you able to differentiate like okay if i want to be a rapper i need to go all in but i know my homies are like they're looking for me they want to kick it this and that like how did you have that conversation or how did you make it a point like hey this is what i want to do i'm this this is my barrio yeah but this is what i want to do you know? i mean you know I was in YA for five years for nine armed robberies. Then Damn. I went to state prison for a gang-related shooting in broad daylight. So Damn. when I finally got out, I did seven on that one with two strikes. I'm going to be real with you. I didn't get really give a fuck who gave a fuck about what. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd been putting in work for that specific neighborhood since my whole life. My father fell victim for that neighborhood. My aunt, rest in peace, got killed for that neighborhood. I'd wasted half my life and incarceration for crimes that I committed in the name of that neighborhood, I wasn't really worried about who didn't like what. I felt like I I had that right at that point. Yeah. And when you're making music, um, what did you, how did your family react? Like, how did your people around My grandma your laughed at me. Why? Because <laughs> she thought it was funny. She, <laughs> I told her grandma, when I get out, I'm finna be a rapper. She said, a rapper? And then she started laughing. Aww. And then you know what? 
at the end when my grandma died and it was all said and done and you know i've been covered by the biggest hip-hop websites in this country la weekly wrote about my life Duh. orange county wrote about my life i've been on power 106 i've been on 92.3 um i've toured the country and before my grandma died she said gee anthony you're really a rapper Aww. So, you feel me? It just is, it's bittersweet. It's in, bittersweet to a degree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. And what's next for enemies? Like what? What are you working at? Working on now? Like um. Right now, right now I got a record with um. Uh, right now I'm working on a project with Jazzo the Juggernaut. That's my guy. He's from Southgate. Okay. And um, you know, he's another rapper. That I've been. Matter of fact, I don't even know him as being a rapper. I just know him as meeting him. At a show before in Vegas, but even before that, we like followed each other on Facebook or, yeah, I followed him on Facebook. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I swear to God, I don't. And um, I met him in person, and and I I, I remember he needed uh, bands to get in. They didn't want to let him in. I had a gang of wristbands, right? Yeah. I had like a bunch of my homies with me, and I still had wristbands over, so I gave them to him and his lady, and boom, oh, so shit. he comes in. That's what's so, up. So <laughs> um. I just got to know him like that. And I would always see him, like, within the last year. Um, Well, you know, I guess to tell that story, I have to go into this other story. Go ahead, go ahead. So, boom, I'm right there. I'm listening. I'm, I'm learning how to do music. I'm learning how to sample. I'm learning about BPMs for DJs. Yep. I'm learning how to work records to DJs. Right. I'm learning how to... I'm learning about record pools. You know, I, mm. I back then they had a record pool at Worlds on Wheels. Mm. You know, I, I remember OT Genesis performing there, and he oh, wasn't shit. OT Genesis yet. DJ Mustard was the dude that was playing the records. Cutting and scratching. And Joe Moses was right there fucking presenting the record right alongside me. So now I'm meeting these guys in this circle. Because now I'm really yeah. on doing the groundwork. Yeah. Learning how to work the records. Trying to get on Power 106. Trying mm -hmm. to get on New at 2 at the time, right? Right. No, I too. So, Shut up, Felipe. <laughs> so, um, you know, bam, bam, everything's going good, whatever, whatever. Boom, I end up getting caught up because I had two strikes. I'd been out of prison for a long time. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, back then the law was crazy. So I, I ended up getting into an argument with this girl that I used to be with. We lived in Montebello. We had an okay. apartment. And uh, police ended up catching me with something uh. I shouldn't have had, blah, blah, blah. I went back to prison. Mm -hmm. I went back to prison from... Uh, 2013 to 2015 so when i got out you know i was ready dude i i, I was motivated as fuck yeah. and i and i had a plan you know and i and i i sat down with glasses and you know glasses was all was going through his own transition at the time mm -hmm. he put out a record and and he he had a hit record and then he kind of slowed down and you know if you if, if you shout out to my man glasses man that's definitely my mentor you know what i'm saying and if you if you if if you um if you watch any of his content, you'll recognize his story because it all connects. You know, mm. he fell back and just started kind of like trying to learn how to do rap and this and that. Yeah. And when I got out of prison, I was making the records. I had shit to go. I had a record that I knew was gonna go on radio because you know Head picked the beat for me. DJ Head, shout out oh, to shout DJ, Head. DJ Head. And DJ Head was like, "Yo, this is a record. You just gotta you just gotta take what we showed you and you gotta run with it." Yeah execution yeah, yeah so you know I, I sat down with glasses and i and i was like dog you know I, I i love you and shit and uh and i can never repay you for everything that you have done for me here but you know i i feel like i gotta go you know what i mean and i gotta make my own way mm -hmm. because if, if i stay here i'm never gonna i'm never gonna i'm always just gonna be your, glasses malone's artist or glad right. and to and, and and you know he's right. always and even to this day he's still a part of my journey because everybody knows I come from that tree. Of course. So, you know, there wasn't no hate. I mean, it just is what it is. Yeah. I went my own way. For sure. I start working a record. Shout out to my PR, man. His name is Tim Sanchez. Okay. Someone who who doesn't get no recognition, man, and he's directly responsible for um, you know, TDE being known. He's directly known for really? he's directly involved in problem being known. You know, he ran the West Coast Writers website and if you know real LA hip hop, you know that TDE started from that website. You know Problem started from that website. You know J Rock, Glasses Malone, all them mm -hmm. people came through that site because of Tim Sanchez, and he okay. just passed away. So shout out to Tim, man. Man, I P. Um, you know he he Might got behind me. Do my homework me. on him. Yeah, do your <laughs> homework. You know he got he got behind me, and he became my publicist, and you know, bam, that's when my career changed for a different uh, to a different speed because. You know, I got this record. Shout out to 92.3. They broke the record. It was called, mm -hmm. like, The West Side. 
then I ran you know, then I ran into an indie, uh Reggie uh Reggie Butler. Shout out to Reggie Butler, my man uh Beach City Reg. Okay. He's a he's an indie promoter, so I ended up getting a hundred thousand dollars. So with that hundred thousand dollars, I put together a radio campaign. Mm -hmm. Got got with Reggie, you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> and before you know it, you know, the record was playing in 30, 37 markets around Damn, the country. That's what's up. And it was a mix show. But you know, when I before I went to prison, it, that that's the way you should have had did it. But right. when I came home from prison, there was something called Spotify that I didn't know about. <laughs> so when I'm coming, so when I'm walking into these buildings, you know, DJ Charisma was like, "Well, how many followers you have on Spotify?" I'm yeah. like, "I don't know what Spotify is." Yeah, numbers. I feel like it's all a numbers you know game what I'm right saying? now. So mm -hmm. it wasn't really much they can do. You know what I'm saying? They were like, "Well, we'll play it for you." You know, we'll play the mix show, but but we're not gonna uh, put mix it at like midnight. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna put it in full rotation. Keep yeah. in mind, I was already in, in, in mix show rotation in 99.1 for six months. Oh, damn. So I'm thinking, damn, I'm going to bring the record home. They finna put me in rotation here. Yeah. It ain't happened like that, right? At all. And um, so, you know, after that whole run, it was like, you know, I toured Texas with GT Garza during that run. Okay, that's dope. Shout out to GT. Um, shit, we, I, I just did a lot, man. I, I went around the country. I, I went to every radio station from Frisco down. You know, it was an experience. Yeah. Um, shout out to Palm Springs. They they showed me a lot of love. They had me in rotation over there. I did one of their big shows. It, it just it was a movie, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It was all over, man. I feel like it's still a movie for you though. I well, you yeah, know, like, it's you still know. a movie. Like, yes, you've had like those ups and downs, yeah. but I think your story is very unique because you you didn't give you're still not giving up on yourself, you know? Yeah. Like, and I think most rappers right now want to come up like, oh, the clout, the fame, yeah. like all this shit, but like you're doing it because you like it. You know, and I well, feel like fools aren't having fun with this shit anymore. I feel like not only that, it's just like, you know, I, I, I've i never not been relevant because I feel like what people are trying to do today, I've been doing it. Mm -hmm. Like the way the dudes rap now, I've been rapping that way. Yeah. There's nothing, there's like, you got to think, like I, I got records with Troy Avenue. I got record with Blue Bucks Clan. I got record with fucking every 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 legend you could think of every um, generation yuck mouth glasses yeah. malone j-rock like and i'm rapping on these records and yeah, i'm not is. falling behind yeah so there's not really a lot of these new dudes that can out rap me there's not a lot of black dudes that can out rap me Period. let's be so, real <laughs> you know I, I feel like that plays a big part in why i'm still relevant yeah. because I, when i put out content like i say the the people tell me that i'm the best not myself yeah i think it's is the action you're putting behind your words, you know what I'm you saying, what I'm that saying? makes you stand out and shit. So congrats on everything. Nah, I appreciate Want to give you your flowers. And yeah, honestly, like, just your story is just inspiring. And I'm sure you have, like, stories for days of, like... Oh, yeah. Nah, I'm giving the you the whole... short version. No, you know I know. Because <laughs> it was, like... After that, I put out the Cut of Hate Dope Boy mixtapes, and those were, those are what really got me known. Okay. And then, then you know, I, I, um, I got into, like, a relationship. And, um... Did it... Make shit better or worse for you? Um, <laughs> man, that that's a podcast in its own right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, you know, during that relationship, my 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 son that had grew up in Vegas had to move in with me, mm. so I took him on like full time. So my life just completely changed. You yeah. know, one minute I'm a touring rapper. Matter of fact, it just all hit me like a ton of bricks, man. You know, I had did a show in Tulsa, so like three thousand people there. Okay, I was just I was just an opener, so it wasn't like three thousand people were there for me, but mm -hmm. that. Those are the type of shows I was doing still. That's dope. So then I met this chick that I had already knew. And I'm gonna be real with you. Um just the just the the, the stress and the and the, you know, because I'll be the first one to tell you, man, I done lost a lot um in pursuit of this music game, you know. Yeah, as far as my it. baby's mother, you know, yeah. my my son. Yeah. So, you know, after I came back from Tulsa, I was like really exhausted mentally emotionally right and um i i i, I knew and, and i was at the height because i even had a manager now and he was like bro like we got this record with blue bucks you about to fucking blow up, blow up. like i got the record i got with blue bucks was like at the height of their their, oh, their, their, their career yeah boom now i've got the record with him he's like bro if we're on we're out of here yeah and then i met shorty and shit you know and it was like it was just something that was different for me you know she was very family orientated and I started to hang out with her and like her sister. And we yeah. would grow places, and 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 it, and it really just made me want to leave that life alone. 
Mm. You know what I mean? What, like the rap life? Yeah, or? because okay. I felt like, um, like you said, there was a lot of ups and downs. I felt like it was a lot of pain there. Yeah. Even though there was there was a couple of accomplishments, I felt like it was a lot more pain. Because a constant fucking grind. Yeah. And just like, fuck, when is it going to come? Or when so, is it going to, you know, go exactly. the way I want it to? Yeah. So, you know, I eventually just started living life with her. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And, um, you know, shit didn't work out. And um, that's just how that played out. But that's what shit took happens. me away from the music. You mm. know what I'm saying? And I don't regret that situation because I learned a lot about myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just was able to experience a whole nother something yeah, else. You I was going to say saying? that. Like, it's an experience. And, like, yeah. it made you look... I feel like every relationship is a lesson. Like, yeah. there's a lesson behind everyone. I'm sure that one taught you something. Right yeah, there. nah, most definitely. So, um, you know, I, after that ended and my son went back with his mom, mm-hmm. I, I was like, you know, there, there's really nothing more for me to do but go back to what I do best, you know, and that's rapping. me rapping. So, um, in that time, that's when I, 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 I start fucking with jazz because I'd seen him on, on his grind and I, I noticed his, I, I could identify his frustration early and easy because when it comes to like his grind and his passion, he reminds me of myself to the T of when I first came into this game in. of what I was really wanted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, I was like, yo, I, I think I think I could help you make better music because, you know, one thing I learned with glasses was how to A&R music. So. I, I feel like I know how to put the right type of sounds with the right voices mm-hmm. to make them dope records. Right. So, you know, I was like, yo, why don't you let me, like, kind of coach you in a way and, and, and stand with you, but mm-hmm. behind you and all at the same round, you know? Right. Like, I'm not even really worried about getting attention or or blowing up. I just want to I just want to make music, and I yeah. want to help you make better music, mm-hmm. and I want to see you go... Cause I, I feel like you you're waiting to get your flowers, but you haven't got them yet. Yeah. But you just need to change a couple of things, and, yeah, it's not gonna and come things to you. are going to change gotta go for get you. It. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. For so sure. He was receptive to it, and we got I in the still... studio, and we started making the records. And um, man, we're doing great, man. Um, the first single is called Wallow. It features Glasses Malone. I heard it. That's that's a banger. Yeah. I you fuck know, with that one. Um, a lot of the websites they they supporting it, or or excuse me, the IG pages <laughs> yeah <laughs> they supporting it um we i know we got some radio we got some fm radio play on it in dallas yes. not too Dope. long ago so i mean you know people still fucking with means you feel me and when i put out the when i put out the records they come for it so i i'm I, you know i feel like i'm here to compete again you know yeah it's good um and you know shout out to everybody doing anything but most of these dudes not fucking with me and that's mm-hmm. just a fact you know what i'm saying so um, I'm I'm just here to make some dope music and, and see where we go. You know yeah, what I'm saying? But let's be real. Like, thank you so much for coming, and it means you're Most the dead. shit. Like, I I love your story. I hope everybody else took something away from his story because it's very inspiring. And like, yeah. you guys need to tap into the music, dog. Like for real. <laughs> but before we end, like I always do this thing um, called Let's Be Real. So okay. I'm asking you questions, and you're just gonna be real as fuck with me. You ready? Yeah, for sure. All right. So let's be real. BMW or Mercedes? Shit, I'm in a BMW right now, but I do love Mercedes. I, but I'm driving a Jag. I got my, I'm, I got a, my project car is in the in the fucking. I need your type of problem, shit. Yeah, you know. Okay, so BMW got BMW. that Beamer. Second one, let's be real. Favorite place to eat in Kadeh? TNA Taco. TNA Taco. Yeah, right What's there. What's your on, order? Right there on Clara and uh, and Wilcox, and I'm ordering the motherfucking carne asada fries, or I'm ordering the pastrami fries. I'm fat. So you feel me? <laughs> Yeah, South Price are the shit. Yeah. Or the banana splits there are fire too. What? I'm gonna have to Man, go. everything they got is pretty fire. Yeah? yeah. Say less. Kudahe. Uh-huh. I always pronounce it wrong. Is it Kudahe or Kudahe? No, it's Kudahe. Kudahe? Yeah, you got okay, it right. Okay, for you sure. Right. Next question. Let's be real. Best Latino rapper on the West Coast right now? In your well, that's opinion. That's a good one. Let me see. Because I, I can't say myself, right? I mean, um, you can say yourself and somebody else. Okay, I'm a best, best, best. I'm gonna say Hazard. There's a lot of them. right you know, now. I'm be 100. Okay, I'm gonna be 100. Shout There's a few of them. There's a few of them. Okay. Um. So I'll say Hazard. Shout I'll say the, the Scheme Kid. He's hard. What's my Scheme? Pause. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you feel me? Uh, who else? Um. Jazzo the Juggernaut. He's dope. Um. Who he's else? Latino. Yeah, yeah. He's he Guatemalan. doesn't sound Latino on the record. He's Guatemalan, that's okay. why. You know, he got a lot of soul in that shit. You feel me? <laughs> um, who else? 
You know, I ain't gonna front the coyote dudes are dope. They're dope. They're dope. Um, I just seen them last night. What's yeah, that? I see, yeah. I, I ran into one of them at the um at the B side show. I don't know if it was like you know I don't know if it was that young versus old vibe, but you know there was a thing. <laughs> Maybe. But you know I don't know. I feel like you know. <laughs> People say I'm cocky, so when I step in a room, I feel like I take up a lot of air. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I felt the energy when you walked in, for <laughs> sure. In a good way. In a good I'll, way. I'm going to be real. So, you know, when it, <laughs> when, I, when I get in a room with other rappers that are talented, I, I know they feel my presence. Yeah, they, so. they do. So I feel like, you know, it was a little something there. But shout out to them. They That's they got they got it popping. Um, And One who more. else? And Young Greedy, man. Shout out to Young Greedy. Young He's still Greedy. doing I seen all those fools last night. Yeah, Fuck yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Young Greedy's Yeah, really you know what? Good. I seen that too. I was wondering why I wasn't invited. That shit's wild. Scheme, that scheme organized crazy. that shit. Scheme, get, <laughs> what the fuck? I'm like, means wasn't in there. That shit is wild. That's wild. Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. But okay, that's what's up. Yeah. All right. Next question. Let's be real. Favorite weed strain? Uh I like I like that uh I like that uh cherry pie, man. Cherry pie is yeah. that indica sativa? They, it's indica. I think it's uh, it's a hybrid actually. I oh, I fuck with hybrids. You know what? It was like some shit burner was endorsing a long time ago. <laughs> but then I found this shop, right? Oh, uh, shout out to um Off the Charts. Off the, that's a shop? It's the name of a shop. Off, Off the, the charts. charts. It's in Oceanside, California. Damn. They they got they got like these jars, right? Mm-hmm. It's literally this big, filled up to the brim with weed for forty five dollars, and it be all the strands. You know what I'm talking about? What? So I go there a lot because um That's I, not I bad. come back I come back and forth from LA to the Indian Reservation. Okay, I do a lot because my mama still live there in the oh, Indian Reservation dope. now. So that's beautiful. Yeah, you know, so I, I go back that. and forth and shit. Okay, for but, sure. Uh, so I fuck with them heavy when I'm out there. Shout I try out to I try to <laughs> and when and when I'm and when I'm finna be home. I go buy like two or three jars to make sure that I'm and stacked up. Yeah, fool, because that's a mission. Yeah, like, for sure. Like, let's be yeah. real. <laughs> oh, hey, but hold up. But my second shop. Yes. Shout out to motherfucking Green Gorilla on Whittier Boulevard. Green Gorilla. That's my spot. Okay. I, I was there. I, I think they legal now because they used to get raided. They've been <laughs> Shout open out for to all like, the trap shops. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? They, but they've been open for like two years, so I think they got legal. Shout out to Gr uh, Green Gorilla. They Green need to give me a hoodie when they see this. You know they what need to sponsor the homie that part. or the homegirl. Sure. Ben Davis need to sponsor me too. Cause <laughs> hey, I'm, let's start there. <laughs> oh, I, I stayed with Ben Davis. You, man, I love that Ben Davis came back in style because I know. I'm a connoisseur. Sure, I was looking at an Easy E video the other day. I'm like, right? this was rocking up Ben Davis, yeah, and man. this shit's popping now. I'm telling you, Ben Davis. That that that's how you knew who was selling crack back in the '90s, because really? it was either Dickies or Ben Davis, and Ben Davis was like the the better quality. Oh you know shit! Now it's regular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Next question. Let's be real. Clear or dark liquor? Uh, I drink champagne. I don't drink liquor. Sp and uh, no, for real. I drink Moet. I drink Clico. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So Crystal. if you're out at a bar, you're going to get some champagne? I don't really be at bars like that. Oh, I ain't my gonna God. Lie. Good uh, for you. You know, <laughs> my, my Mastro's or Mastro's. motherfucking. Look at it. Somewhere over there. I'm just being don't honest. Don't be flexing on me now. Nah, this just, I swear to God, this is really who I am. I'm Good. I'm trying to be a bougie cholo. Congrats. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we need more bougie cholos Man, in LA. Man, you got to get your money up. You <laughs> Please. <know>? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, last question. Let's be real. Favorite movie? Ooh, that's a good one because I got a lot of favorite movies. Pick one. Pick one. Um, one that you catch yourself watching like all the time when you want to binge watch or anything. I'm, I'm going to say two. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to say, um, damn, and it's crazy that I don't even remember the name. Of this, <laughs> um, the, the, movie, the movie about Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, I know which one. Yeah, I, can't, I don't know why I don't remember the I name. I don't know what it. it's called. But uh, I know I've I seen it. it on my phone. I don't know. I know it's what I got, Matter of fact, I got it in my. Because I got to tell you the name. Tell me the name. Yeah, hold up. Let me get in my, my iTunes movie. That's the fool that made. Um, he made Amazon? Facebook. Or Facebook? See, you, man, damn. Man. You, you the I'm host. I'm making you don't Gen Z look bad. I'm making Gen Z look bad right now. I'm going to have to come for your job. Mark man. Zuckerberg. I mean, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg. Man. He has a movie? Yeah. You know which one I'm getting confused with? The Steve Jobs movie. It's called The Social Experiment. Oh, that's the one. Oh, I, that one's good. So that's that, my first favorite movie. My second favorite movie is Mean Girls. I love Mean Girls. It is what it is. Don't dun, judge dun, me. Dun, 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 dun. I'm strapped <laughs> constantly. You feel me? I love that. Cholos yeah. watch Mean Girls too. Man, I'm just saying, bro. You feel me? But, um, yeah. but the social experiment. The social it's experiment. It's a documentary, right? No, no, it's a movie. It's, it's about movie? Mark Zuckerberg and, and, and how he started really? Facebook. Yeah. Oh. It's a really dope movie. You should watch it. I think I've seen it. You'll like it. it, it it's you know. It talks about like the internet and shit. Well, it talks about how he created Facebook and how what? he, you know, he stole it. He stole the idea from somebody, but he made it better. Oh. 
And then um, Justin Timberlake plays a different character that came in, um, and and he he basically had um, connections to the to the to the lending firms in oh. uh, in in what it, over there in uh, where where they have uh, like Apple and Mac. Okay, and all okay. That. I forget. The, I Silicon need to watch Valley, it. Silicon, Silicon Valley. Valley in the yeah. So in, he had connections to them, and then they fronted Mark Zuckerberg. I think it was like half a milli to start Facebook. And then the shit blew up, and now they're billionaires. And now he's taking over. And and the movie's about how he's getting sued by the dudes that he stole the idea from. Damn, so I it, didn't it know talks, that. It, it, it runs through the whole story. It's a great movie, Damn. man. Okay, le- last question. Let's be real. Social okay. media. What, what are your it? thoughts about social media? Um, man, I think I think social media is is is, is smoking mirrors, man. I think I think you can be whoever you want to be on it. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I see a lot of people that they they take full court advantage of that you know and they be whoever they wasn't before you mm-hmm. know because i know a lot of rappers that you think they're the coolest people on the planet you get around them they can't even talk to bitches and they just kind of corny you know what i'm saying or, or they dress weird <laughs> and they got dirty shoes and they just corny all the way around you know yeah. like I I, I I was raised by you know my crack dealers was my role models and shit, you feel me? <laughs> i respect it <laughs> straight up so. oh man I, know, well, I just think a lot of these dudes is really corny yeah shit, you know when you meet them don't let social media fool you really don't though don't let it fool nah. you but look check it out enemies came in the building let everybody know how they could find your music find your socials um, all that shit you can find me everywhere at a-n-n-i-m-e-a-n-z that's for everything that's for um you know, fucking IG, Snapchat. I'm under the plumber and your bitch phone. So you uh, feel me? Like all that, dog. <laughs> but hit me up. Make sure you follow my man, Jazzle the Juggernaut. You know what I mean? We got a lot of dope music. We got yeah. a lot of dope content. Shout out to uh, Florida yes. Fools. Because they've been Florida supporting Fools. us crazy, right? Yeah, they've they been showing love like to the West Coast. Like, yeah, they looking out, man. So shout out to shout them. Shout out to Florida. And uh, yeah, man, thank you for having me. Yes, and just no be problem. looking out. New music coming all year long. We just working now. You yes, know we just working. Thank you so much, Enemies, for coming. It's your girl, Leslie from the B. And that was another episode of the Lesby Real Podcast. We out.